as a company administrator, while entering remittance, you may find the need to add an electronic form of payment. In this short screencast, I'm going to walk you through the process of adding a bank account into the platform in order to utilize it to make electronic payment in the form of ACH payments going forward. In order to do that, you need to make sure that the remittance request you're currently on has been finalized. Once this request has been finalized, you're going to navigate to Actions and Payments. You're doing that from the Request Profile. From the Request Profile, you will see an option here to pay this request by ACH. And you'll notice that since you have not configured it previously, the system or the platform gives you the option to actually configure that at this point in time. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Once you click on the configuration, you'll be prompted with the option to add a bank account. I will emphasize that you need to do this while you're selected as the company. That's the default, but you need to make sure that these are not your own personal ACH or your own personal bank accounts but the bank account for the company that you are transacting for. In this case, I am impersonating an individual at DRG Mechanical, and you'll notice that I've currently got that selected. I'm simply going to hit Add Bank Account. When I do that, I'm prompted with a few properties that I need to enter in order to create it. It's a fairly simple process. In order to do that, I simply enter the account number. Once the account number has been entered. The system also prompts for the routing number for the bank. This is a nine digit number uh, that you can find on the bottom of most of your checks. And then the account holder name. This is just the name of the business. In this case, I'm going to put this fictitious, fictitious name here, DRG Mechanical. And then importantly here as well, an account holder type. If you're doing this for a business, most folks that are doing this inside of our platform are. You're going to choose company as the default. Here you're next and finally prompted with just a display as. This is really just an alias uh, that allows you to identify the account. Once this information has been entered in a single time, we do not display these two pieces of information anywhere at any point in time. And so if you've got multiple accounts on file in our platform, you'll need to have some sort of alias so that you are familiar with what account you're going to be used. In order to do that, I'm just going to identify my account and I'll use the last four of my account number uh, as an identifier. So once this is done, you want to double check the information to ensure that both the routing number and the account number are correct, that you've entered in the legal name of the company, that you've selected the option account holder type company and selected uh, or provided information regarding the alias, you can click on save account. At this point now, as a contractor admin, while doing business uh, under the contractor role, you can transact at any point to make an ACH transaction or an electronic ch check transaction uh, from this bank back to uh, the local chapter or local you may be working with. That looks something like this. I'm going to open up the remittance again, go into Actions, choose Payments. You'll notice now that when I select the option to pay by ACH, instead of being prompted to create the account, the system knows that I've got an account and it will show you a basic breakdown of the payments that are being made. Uh, under most circumstances, these payments are being covered by the entity that the contractor is working for, either the local chapter or the local. And you would then hit submit here. That uh, Once you hit submit, the status appearing on the remittance request will show that it's a pending ACH and, and these will be processed in a few days transferring that money from your account uh, over to the organization.